If placed into the world of Jujutsu Kaisen, could Shigeo Kageyama survive fighting everyone trying to kill him? Yes, and it wouldn't be hard at all. And the craziest part is, he might not even need to be at maximum power. If you're watching this video, I'm assuming you've seen Mob Psycho 100, and if not, watch it, it's amazing. I honestly feel kind of bad making a power scaling type video over it because the series shouldn't just be boiled down to that. But I'm specifically choosing him here because I think he fits well in JJK, because his whole thing is exercising curses. So pretty obvious there. Here's the scenario. Let's say he's placed in JJK and due to his immense power, and the fact that the higher-ups assume he doesn't have control in it, there's an immediate order for everyone to execute him. Everyone is out to kill Mob. Not just the bad guys, the good guys too. Mob simply has to defend himself here, and we'll also say he has cursed energy because why not? Even with the different powers from each verse, there's no reason to limit him considering he can see curses and use ESP in his own verse. A lot of regular people in JJK have it anyways, so he definitely would. Originally I wanted to make this video about just placing him in Shibuya, but for Mob, we could take it even further and put him up against Koen game characters as well. He'll cap out at 100% here since he's not going to use his question 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 power, and I'm just going to call that unknown because it's going to be annoying to say question 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 over and over again. But that's a subconscious power that he can't just use willingly, and given what actually happens in the recent season of Mob Psycho 100, and the fact that he's accepted it, that's just not going to come out. And this way we keep him in character. There are a few ways to do this, and I could have done this like my Jojo Jujutsu Kaisen videos where I threw them into JJK and gave them cursed techniques and domains based on their abilities. Or I could do this as a standard versus battle matchup. I'm going to go with the latter here because Mob already goes around exercising curses and fits pretty well into the versus is. And realistically, all he'd gain is maybe a domain expansion, which he wouldn't even really need here. Would he truly have a way to defeat everybody? Let's start by discussing Mob's own power. And one thing to consider throughout this video is the fact that he's going to be acting in character. So keep in mind how he would act realistically in these situations. But there's two big things to mention here that people kind of misconstrue. 100% Mob isn't stronger than normal Mob. It's made pretty clear in the series that it's just an emotional outburst, essentially, where he's fighting with 100% of his power. People infer his progress towards explosion as him accessing more of his power, but he can access that power in base, he's just purposefully holding himself back, essentially. A simple comparison would be key in Dragon Ball. Goku, for example, could tap into his full power anytime he wants to. He doesn't need a specific catalyst or anything. Just because he's suppressing his power doesn't mean he can't access that full power. He's just purposefully not drawing upon it. So, for example, when Mob's at 10%, that 10% doesn't mean that Mob's only at 10% of his power. He could use what he wants here. And also for his unknown state, this is the same thing. It's a completely unrestrained Mob, except an alter ego him where he's completely bloodlusted and just destroys anything in his path. But at the end of the series, this doesn't matter because he comes to terms with that part of himself. So it's not like he's restricted while in quote unquote base. It's the fact that he purposefully holds himself back, but now at the end of the series, Mob has overcome these problems in a sense. I wanted to clear that up because it's a misconception that's used sometimes, and it explains how I'm going to treat him in this video because that's how the series treats him and that's where he is now in that story. If you're liking this so far, be sure to drop a like and subscribe. I make a lot of videos like this, and now we're going to be getting into the fun stuff here. What are his stats like? As with speed, it's a little bit hard to gauge, but I think at the very least we could put him at massively hypersonic based on Dimple fighting Psycho Helmet and his army, because Dimple's speed feats here should apply to Mob. But again, it's kind of weird trying to place where Mob's speed is because I actually had a hard time finding specific speed feats for him. He's probably at least a few times higher than this, which is good because that would put him around the JJK top tiers, which in my past videos I consider faster than Lightning thanks to Hakari and Kashimo. So people on or above their level would be around that speed too. He might be slower than that, but we can't say for sure. At the same time, given his full power, I think it would be reasonable to say he's probably beyond that at least. But still, weird to place. As for his physical strength, he outclasses pretty much everyone in JJK. Even before the end of the series, he had island and country level feats, based on fights such as the one with Dimple and the one with Suzuki, and he's far beyond that now. And this is still on the low end because you could scale him even higher based on his fight with Mogami in that Dream World scene, so obviously impressive that even at the low end he outscales pretty much everyone there, besides Yuki's black hole mate. As for his abilities, well, he's an Esper. He's incredibly skilled with telekinesis, which ranges from just lifting up things and other people, to actually projecting his energy as energy blast. And there's two other big powers he has here that I think will be important in this. One, he could actually absorb power from others too, specifically power from other espers. Which is really important to note because if he could do that with cursed energy too, that's terrifying to fight against. Also, he has control over his soul and could regenerate it, as well as help it resist attacks. Which means he's a surprisingly strong counter for Mahito. His whole power works on changing the shape of one's soul, and Mob has been shown to resist that, as well as recover from it completely. I think right off the bat it's pretty safe to say he won't have a problem with Shibuya. He outclasses all the grade ones there, just in raw strength alone. And in terms of their specific abilities, there's nothing here that would really hard counter him. Of course, Maharaga's adaptation might be a problem, especially if Mob doesn't just finish him off right away, but Mob has more than enough physical power to actually finish him off right away if he needed to. Another big thing working in his favor here is that cursed energy is negative energy. People and curses derive their cursed energy from negative emotions, and that's where the raw power from it comes from. 
mob is completely advantaged against this whole power system here. And we said he has cursed energy too, because that way other people could use their cursed techniques and domains on him, and he could see curses and stuff. But Maba's whole thing isn't just exercising curses, he essentially cleanses all negative energy. So besides being really effective against curses, plus with his great experience and control as an Esper, you could make an argument that not only would he derive great power from cursed energy thanks to his negative emotions, but at the same time, with him coming to terms with himself by now and his emotions, as well as looking at how his power is used throughout the series, you could even say he's a counter to all cursed energy in general, and could probably heavily negate or completely ignore the effects of it. Let's throw him against Cullen game players now saying that he's part of the Cullen game, and plus, there's the order out to kill him, so there's not anyone on his side either. The antagonist and protagonist are against him. Any curses that come his way, he'll exercise without a problem. As for people, he's probably not going to use his full power against them, or feel the need to kill them either. His whole objective here is to survive. He's not just bloodlusted right away. He could kill them if he wanted to, he definitely is capable of it. But he likely wouldn't want to, nor would he need to. Plus, a big thing about Mob is how quickly he can get people to like him. Just as we're going to keep him in character, we're going to keep everyone else here in character too so technically they're out to kill him right away. Mob isn't bloodlusted, and the others technically are, because they're out to kill Mob in the first place, but given Mob's charisma, there's definitely a bunch of people that would come around to him. Let's look through some of the higher tier Cullen game characters. Some people are completely useless against him. As powerful as Higuruma is, his technique wouldn't really do anything to Mob because he's a good boy. As for Hikari, he could at least survive, but if Mob did use his full power, he definitely does overpower Hikari to the point where he could just destroy every bit of him and prevent him from regenerating, but he's likely not going to kill Hikari either. Kind of a stalemate in that sense, but Mob wouldn't lose. As for Kashimo, depending on Mob's speed, he might actually outspeed Mob, but Mob is definitely way too durable and way too powerful for Kashimo to do anything. For a lot of the characters, at least the people who are living people, the biggest thing working for them is that Mob wouldn't want to kill them. Takaba's ability might actually be hard to counter due to how weird it is, but he's also not the type to kill. So him alone won't be doing much. How about the Sendai colony? No one there's going to be capable of defeating him. Especially Yuta, because despite his amazing power, especially his domain, He's one of the most likely to empathize with Mob. Same goes for Yuji, who has great power of his own right, but first of all, his soul abilities won't do much to Mob, and he probably wouldn't want to kill Mob either. He and Yuta were both in the exact same circumstances, ordered to be executed because of their great power, but they're not bad guys. For Maki, she's completely physically overpowered here, despite her own great strength. Let's go even beyond the Cullen games to get characters that weren't necessarily participants there, just so we can cover everybody in this verse. For Yuki, like I said, her black hole actually might be able to do something here, but that's really the only thing. I don't even know if she'd necessarily be pushed that here. And again, probably one of the people that would be affected by Mob's charisma. For Kenjaku, Mob is a hard counter for him. The only issue would be his gravity manipulation, since Mob has no direct counter to it, but he can't be possessed by Kenjaku. And as for Kenjaku using Gato's ability, yeah, he washes all those cursed spirits pretty easily, including Uzumaki. Even when incarnated, Sukuna is outclassed by Mob's strength. But again, going back to Maharaga and I guess all of Megumi's abilities, Mob could overcome them, but if Sukuna is able to keep Maharaga around long enough to adapt to Mob, and if Maharaga's adaptation can truly go that far, yeah, there's a slight chance he could win here, but it's kind of a long shot still. As for Gojo, Mob can't bypass Infinity, at least not with his raw speed. He actually does have ways to get through to Gojo though, but it really depends on how he'd act. Telekinesis attacks the target directly. It's kind of a perfect counter for Gojo actually. Gojo would probably be able to block all of Mob's physical attacks and probably his energy attacks too, but Mob actually could defeat him with Telekinesis, probably even kill him with it too. But on top of that, I think Gojo would be one of the people not to actually try and kill Mob, given how he helped Yuta and Yuji in these situations too. So since we are keeping everyone in character, he survives there too. But if for some reason Gojo did try and kill him, well, Mob has ways of at least knocking Gojo out. He also has ways to kill him too, which he wouldn't do, but worth mentioning. And as for his domain, there's two ways it could play out. One, Mob would simply resist it, and it does nothing, because he has been shown to resist all types of mind manipulation like that. Most likely he completely negates the effects of Gojo's domain. Or another potential outcome that would require him to be bloodlusted, he could reflect the attack. There's a scene where he does exactly this. So he could have Gojo be harmed by the effects of his domain, if he really wanted to at least. Gojo's domain attacks your soul and mind, two things Mob has great control over and can defend pretty well. That basically covers everything, so there are a few ways to defeat him, but one of them requires Yuki to turn into a black hole, which she wouldn't do, unless Mob tries to kill her. Another way might be Kenjaku's gravity manipulation, depending on how that works. And theoretically, Maharaga might be able to adapt to him, but Maharaga is not actually a human, and would be one of the things that Mob just destroys outright, before Maharaga even has a chance to adapt. The craziest part about this whole setup, though, is the fact that Mob doesn't have to use his full power, nor does he need to kill anyone. We kept him in character here. The ideal outcome is for him to defeat everybody non lethally, which he could definitely do, and he'd even turn a lot of people to his side. As for all the curses and anything like that, yeah, he'd easily exercise them. There's not really anyone in the series that could stand up against him. 
And if we did have him unrestricted and bloodlusted for some reason, there wouldn't even really be a discussion here. None of this is even close. But that leaves me with one question, and something I want to ask you guys. Given Mob's ability to change others through his charisma and such, would he be the one to actually get through to Sukuna? That's his true challenge here. Would Mob's natural charisma and charm get through to him and make him reevaluate his life? Turning Sukuna into a truly good guy. I'm half joking, but still, seeing what Mob has been capable of, who knows? Discuss below. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.